Comics revolve around characters, so to no one's surprise, the character design phase is one of the most important parts of telling your story. We're going to start out thinking about what we want our character to look like, because this character is going to be our guide for our readers throughout the entire story. We really want to make something that people are going to be able to connect with and relate to. You're going to want to think about silhouette value of your character. You're going to want to think about uh, what body type they have, which also kind of plays into silhouette. You're going to want to think about the colors that they have, the personality that they have, the style that you're going to want to use, and the character design phase is where you're going to get that all out. Okay, now that we have our clean pencil drawing, let's go ahead and take it to inks. Inking is a way to clean up your drawing and put final lines on it so it looks clean and professional and makes the coloring process a lot easier. What you're going to want to do to start inking is very similar to what you did when you were cleaning up in pencils. You're going to want to take your pencil layer and then drop it down in opacity, just a little bit so you can still see it but so that it's not getting in the way when you're inking. Make a new layer that you're going to have your inks on, on top of that. Now, select the brush of your choice. I like this G pen, it's pretty good. Give it a, a test stroke or two here so you know what it's going to look like. You don't have to do black, but uh, standard practice usually black. So that's what I'm going to use. Now it's really important while you're inking to pay attention to your line weight, as these will be the final lines, and people will be seeing this. So go ahead and think hard about where the shadows are going to fall in your drawing, usually the underside of things. If your lighting is from the top, maybe if you're doing lower lighting, then things are going to hit more towards the top. But we're just going to have some nice standard lighting here, probably from the sun, as she likes to be outdoors. Once again, if you don't get your line right, that's OK. Just hit undo. Try it again. A trick to inking on a tablet or any other digital drawing device is that if you want to get a nice smooth line, it helps to move fast. The slower you go, the more you're going to get a little bit of wobble. So it behooves you to pull out your line as quickly as possible. Do try to vary your line weight just a little bit in some spots. It helps to keep the drawing from looking too monotonous. If you see anything that you still want to correct from your pencils, go ahead and do that now. This is the last chance you're going to get to touch your line work before you move on in the process. One thing to remember about inking is that it is not tracing. I mean, it can be, and sometimes it can certainly feel that way, but if you're doing it right, it should be another step in the process that helps add to your finished artwork. As you can see, I'm going through, I'm doing subtle line variation, just helping to add a little bit more interest to the line work of this finished piece. When you're done, go ahead and take just one last pass through to see if there's anything else that you could clean up just a little bit more, tighten up, make more interesting, whatever. Maybe add a little bit of final extra line weight to communicate a better sense of lighting. Pop a couple of things out into the foreground a little bit more. And you're done. OK, now that we're done inking, let's go ahead and move on to color. Again, I'll probably talk a little bit more about this process later. But what's really important now is making color choices about your character's outfit that will work with the backgrounds that you're going to put your character in. So take a moment to think about your setting, think about what kind of colors you want to use, and how that's going to work with your character. I know that this character is going to be set in a forest setting that's probably going to have a lot of dark greens and browns. So I want to make her outfit a little bit brighter than that in order to pop her out. So let's go ahead and get rid of that pencil sketch now because we're not going to need it. You can either hide it or you can delete it either way. I'm just going to go ahead and hide it. And we're going to go make a new layer underneath our ink layer. And then we're going to fill that layer with white and merge the two together. All right. Now we're going to make sure that our line work is only black and there's no gray or anything in there. So we're going to go up to edit. We're going to go to tonal correction. And we're going to hit binarization. And just if, make sure preview is checked and slide the slider around until you think it looks right. For the most part, it shouldn't change a whole lot. I like to set mine to 155, 156-ish, and then hit OK. This will help our paint bucket tool make better selections. 
Unfortunately, right now you can't see the color under it, so go ahead and go up to the layer properties and turn it to multiply so we can see what ha what's happening underneath our ink layer. All right, create another new layer underneath our inks and then swap to your paint bucket and start filling in colors. I think I want her top to be yellow, so I'm gonna pick a yellow that I am happy with and start paint bucketing. And you can see how fast this is going. You can even just hold the paint bucket down on the screen and just drag it around to fill multiple areas. It makes it real easy. Oops. Every once in a while, you might hit a little snag like that where there's a break in your line work. Just go up, pick a brush, close it off, and go back to your paint bucket. Now, in order to keep a little bit of continuity with our outfit and to keep things from getting a little bit too out of control with various colors, I'm gonna try and use a lot of the same colors over and over again on her outfit. So I'm gonna use the yellow for her gloves as well. I'm gonna repeat the red of her sash in her hair tie as well. Now, one thing you're gonna notice about this particular character design is that she has a lot of what I like to refer to as silhouette value. And what silhouette value is, is when your character stands out, even if they were entirely blacked out as a black silhouette. And what is good about silhouette value is that it helps the viewer recognize your specific characters for the individuals that they are, as well as helps them track them throughout the page. Now, some things that you can use to help create silhouette value in your own characters are a very distinctive body type, a distinctive hairstyle, you can see she's got these crazy ponytail things going on off the back that, if she were just in silhouette, would definitely enable people to pick her out of a crowd. She's got this giant sash flowy thing that's going to be popping out as well. Just try and keep in mind little things like that make really nice character touches and help to give your work a very professional look. So the drawing looks pretty good like this. You can tell that even with just basic flat color, everything's already starting to pop and our character is really starting to come together. All right, now we have our flat color layer completed. However, if you wanna give it kind of an animation look and feel, you can go back and add some very simple cell shading. Create a layer above your colors, and then you're gonna to want to select a very almost neutrally gray shadow color. I tend to like to use like a really gray purple. Don't make it particularly dark. Just something right about there ought to do just fine. And then you're gonna wanna set the layer you're going to do your shadows on to multiply, and then fill that layer with your shadow color. Okay, as you can see, it's kind of gotten everywhere for the moment, but don't worry, we're going to fix that with a layer mask. So this little symbol down here helps us create a layer mask. And we can use this so we can have a non-destructive process, which means that even when you erase things, you won't actually be erasing anything. Now, it's gonna make a lot more sense in just a second, but let's go ahead and get rid of the shadow color for the moment by filling this layer with our clear or transparent color. Bam, it's gone. All right. We can now draw on this black part right here with any color we want, and it will bring that shadow layer back to us. This is a great way to work if you're gonna be making a lot of decisions and you're not sure what you're gonna like. It's also just a great way to work in general because you end up with a non-destructive layer. Right now, before you finish off your colors, you might wanna take a look just to make sure that nothing else is wrong with your drawing. I was just about to start on the shadow layer when I realized, uh-oh, her pigtails somehow become flesh color. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick before we move on. Go back to your flats layer, fix your mistake. Yay, now we can move forward. <laughs> All right, so moving back to our layer, we're gonna take a brush, any brush you want. It can be just a regular flat brush like you use to ink your thing, or it can be a hairy brush, whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and use this just basic brush to create nice, clean, single tone shadow shape, so it gives it kind of an animated cell look, hence the term cell shading. Just go through and make some lighting choices based on where you've decided that the light source is coming from. I'm gonna say for her, probably somewhere around here, and I'll draw us a little light bulb. 
just so we can remember that. If that helps you to have that there, just to remind you where you decided your light was coming from, go ahead and leave that there, and then you can erase it when you're done. And again, the way this works is when you draw in this layer with a regular color, it puts the color of the shadow back on. If you ever want to go back and correct a mistake, simply hit C to change your brush to transparent, and you can get rid of it just as easily. When you're done, hit C again, and it will take you right back to the color you were using initially. All right, and with our shading done, you can tell the character already has a lot more depth. So now we're done designing our character. We talked about silhouette value, about color, about shape, size, personality, style. We've pretty much gone over it all. Now we're ready to move on to actually telling our story through comics.